Hey guys, what's up? My name is Karis. Fix your shitty movement Tuesday. I didn't get a chance yesterday to film this, mainly because I couldn't find a place to film. This is better without a mask on. I'm at my beloved Strong Bodies today, where I'm the only person, hence I can be maskless. Anyway, so last week we talked about the deadlift and the lats roll in the deadlift. And as I promised, today we are gonna talk about your legs and their role in the deadlift. Um, but much like the bench press, the basically as the body works as one unit. So the biggest issue I see in people's deadlift, uh, from a leg standpoint that is, is they turn their deadlifts into squats. And there's a lot of things wrong with that, but first and foremost, remember that a hip hinge is just that, a hip hinge, right? So there's some bending in the back of the leg, right? Because your hamstrings assist in um, hip extension and therefore in hip flexion, right? Hip flexion is bending your hips. So this is the most difficult concept for a lot of people to grasp. And a lot of it is because they don't know how to bend their hips without just using their back. So see how my hips aren't moving anymore? It's all coming from my low back there. Um, or to do this, which is actually my hips moving down, right? And that's a squat. So um, a lot of people are under the impression that the position that your hips are in is gonna dictate whether or not you're in a hip hinge. That's not true. Some people have a very low hip position in their deadlift and they're still in a hip hinge. What dictates that? Mainly the position of your knees. So if you're completely stiff-legged, right? I mean, obviously that's gonna cause a lot of problems um, in your conventional deadlift. I mean, it's not even gonna feel right. So that's not usually where that issue is. That kind of issue shows up more in like good mornings, kettlebell swings, um, Romanian deadlifts. What happens in people's deadlifts is that, again, they turn it into a squat. So, a, I'll show you with conventional again to start. You guys see I'm wearing shoes. I'm trying to show you that you can train in shoes even though I'm very against it. Some places you need shoes, I know that. Okay, so remember in conventional you set up with the bar a little bit away from you. We learned that last time. If this is new to you, go watch the fucking video so that you can be on the same page. I don't have to repeat myself. So what people go is this. So if you can see, my knees are way forward. And that might not be a problem for someone for very long. Um, they might be able to pick the weight up that way. But what you're trying to do, the way that I think about the deadlift, is it's like tug of war. So when you get to a certain weight, usually like maybe 20 pounds more than body weight, depending on the individual, if you have something that's gonna shift the bar this way, you're not gonna make it. You're either gonna hurt yourself or um, you're not gonna be able to pick it up. So when your knees are way far over the bar like this, right, eventually, right, you might be able to come up straight when it's nice and light, but eventually you're gonna get caught where it's gonna push you here, and you can see now what's finishing that lift is my lower back. And um, the same thing happens in sumo. And the issue, I'll show you in sumo too, and that's where, you know, with this one, you come right up on the bar, right? Again, which we learned last time. I don't know if you guys can see this. Might get a better ass view that way, but you know, that's why you're here anyway, let's be real. So my legs are all the way up against the bar with this one, right? And then when I tell them to use their lats to pull the bar to them, what they actually do is pull themselves to the bar. And so this isn't a hinge, right? I have to like straighten my knees. And you see that same thing. I'm actually coming out this way and so eventually my back is gonna take the brunt of that, or rather I'm gonna feel it there. Um, and the other thing that people do with their legs that's kind of in the squat family, but that's more related to like the, the lat engagement is that they will kick off with their legs first and then finish with the dreaded stripper deadlift. That's much more common in sumo. So like we talked about last time, the lats roll excuse me, is to pull the bar to you, and then you're sitting back with it. So most people are like, well, I can't sit back because I feel like I'm gonna fall backwards. Guess why that is? 
because your feet are weak. Your feet are weak. So what happens, I'll kick off my shoes to show you. I mean, that was really just for show. I'm doing this red branding thing, so that's really why they were there, let's be real. But I got a red bra. We're still good. So when I tell you to lean back in your deadlift, right, you hold on and you stack back like this, right? And you see my shins are nice and vertical here, giving me a nice clear path because I'm seated back. So if you can't do that, it's because your toes are popping up, right? And so when I tell you to push your toes down, then that's when people do this, right? So you feel unstable, unsafe on your feet. I know, it sounds like I'm making this shit up because I just went on a foot rant and I've been doing that for like the past 36 years, but it's true. If you can't sit back with it, it's because your feet do not feel stable and you feel like you're gonna fall backwards. So what does your body do? It brings you forward. Most people, I think if you're deadlifting or watching this video, understand that the deadlift is a posterior chain movement. And so what that means is you're trying to use your posterior chain. If you're crowding forward like this, that ain't your posterior chain. That's a squat. And eventually you're gonna reach a point where you can no longer control the weight. One of the best ways to learn how to do this, first of all, take off your fucking shoes. Secondly, or don't wear shoes that curve up at the top because that's gonna make it even harder for you to stay um, tight on your toes. But do the kettlebell swing and do it well. So I'm not gonna go over the kettlebell swing right now because I'm short on time, but I'm gonna go over it soon because I want you guys to learn why the kettlebell swing is so useful in learning your deadlift and also not, not just your deadlift, but a hip hinge in general and learning how to actually use your posterior chain in the way that it's designed. If you're crowding the bar, if your knees are forward of the bar, not only is it gonna impede the movement of the bar, it's gonna impede the movement of your arms, right? You have nowhere to go. Remember the deadlift is a leveraging motion. So as the bar comes up this way, your hips go down and then they come forward. And that's the same with conventional and sumo. So next time I'm going over the kettlebell swing, practice this. Uh, happy Tuesday, I'll see you guys later.